he would say it's way more important that you um, have compassion for other people. That is a superpower, you know? Mm -hmm. Then that you can move stuff with your mind or you can levitate or something. What good is that, you know? I mean, I could... <gasps> <laughs> you know, move this book into my hand, but that would probably be like freak y'all out or like Yeah, and then it would just build my ego up, which is totally the opposite of what I want to do, right? Yeah. So, you know, I I don't know, you know, I just you watch the news and you think if more people practiced this, if more people talked about bodhicitta, you know? then sometimes the news is horrible, the stuff that happens, you know? But I really believe that, and somebody told me this a long time ago, and it's always helped me, as dark as the world gets, the brighter the lights get, you know? So there are a lot of good things happening out there. I know there are, but it's just not being reported on like the tragedies that happen, you know? There's billions of people in the world and the amount of violence that's actually happening is like less than 1% of 1%, you know? Like on a normal given day, you go to Walmart, you go over here, you do all this stuff, you don't see any violence, you know? On a normal day. If the world was really as terrible as the news would think, you know, they would like us to believe, shoot, I'd be scared to leave the house, you know? But in reality, most of the people that I meet are pretty cool people, you know? How about you? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's see what Bodhi, let's see what Bodhi, let's see what Shanti Diva has to say today. I got a question for you. Speaking of the world being bad or whatever, how long do you think the world has been in existence? Anybody know? This is where we're going to free it up to be a conversation because I don't want to be just up here talking at you all day. Um, like, forming as a planet? Yeah. Like a million, like billions of years old. Billions? <laughs> billions with the bebop? Yeah, with the bebop. Okay. Yeah, with a bebop. Billion with the bebop? Something like six. Six billion? Six billion. Yeah. I trust his answer. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I, did, I heard a really, to like a similar point, I was reading a, a <coughs> book and it had a really interesting question, um, like a mind kind of riddle. And it was, who were you before both of your parents were born? Yeah. Oh, oh. Wow. That's so tough. <laughs> Everybody's like, whoa. Oh, God. <laughs> so I still love this one. That's trippy, right? You know, Caleb, um, the story in PBS about, about Buddha? the Buddha, yeah. Yeah. It's a shadow. They, somebody gave him bad food and he almost died. Yep. He ate it because he was, he didn't want to reject the food. That's and right. It was bad food. And Absolutely. He, ate it and he almost died. Right. Yeah. And so once again, Maria, that shows his bodhicitta was at such a high level because mm -hmm. not only was it, they say it was pork. And so, you know, a lot of Buddhists don't eat meat. I, I became a vegetarian, uh, thanks to encouragement from friends. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I would, uh, you know, oh, y'all should research it, right? I feel great, and I, ha I, don't, I don't have a bad meal. I mean, my wife cooks great vegetarian food now, and so it, it's, it's awesome. But so Buddha was at a place in his life where he was like, okay, he begged his food every day, one meal a day. And this elderly man gave him some food, and he said, oh, this kind of looks rancid. Like, I don't know if I want to eat this or not, you know? But he, out of love and compassion for that elderly gentleman, that out of the goodness of his heart, he gave the Buddha something, right? So he's like, do I be an a-hole here, or what, do I eat it, and I get sick? Like, what do I do here, you know? Now, another side of that, too, is the old man that gave that food is building up karma by giving food to monks. This is going to help this old guy in his next life. The fact that he gave Buddha something out of the goodness of his heart is like putting good karma in his account that's going to affect all of his life, right? 
So instead of rejecting it, Buddha chose to eat it, probably knowing that he was going to get sick. And he was 80 years old at the time, and it, it killed him, right? But he was a Buddha, so it all worked out fine, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So like I say, different stages of uh, <laughs> different stages of Bodhicitta there. I probably would have went around the corner and dumped it out, you know, washing my bowl out. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, right? I would have gave it to a friend. <laughs> okay, so, and how do y'all think we got here? Were we created by God? Did we evolve? Did aliens make us? That's what I believe in the heart. But even if aliens made us, like, who made the aliens, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who were the aliens before their parents met? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think God created us. Yeah. 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 God created us? Yes. What? You don't even think about it, how we got here, or how the planet got here. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, I'm right here. I guess the point is what we do now, right? Yeah. Because there's so many versions of what we thought and what we've created in our minds. Right. How we got here. It's like I don't even know anymore. Yeah. Well, so I would say that you know I can't say why that question is so important, but what you believe in general are the filters that you use to see the world like you create your reality every day by your belief system you know what i mean so like if people believe that we're created by god that's how they view the world that's their their world view literally right and so whatever that belief is maybe not about the world or whatever but even when i was living as a christian i lived as a christian for six years i was at church every time the door was open or whatever I kind of wish I knew now, wish I knew then what I know now. You know, Buddhism has helped me. I'd probably be a better Christian now that I'm a Buddhist, right? Because um, I really didn't think about how the mind worked. And I, I, I didn't have that insight. Like, what I believed was literally affecting my world, but I could have been a better Christian, not in the fact that not sinning, you know, I could have not sinned or whatever, but like if I literally believe that God heard me and answered my prayers, and if I literally believed the doctrine of Christianity, it would have gave me a great amount of comfort in my life. If I knew where I was going when I died, and I knew that there was a man upstairs helping me out, and I trusted every time I prayed, he was going to be for me, not against me, that would have been great. But unfortunately, I had a lot of doubt, you know? I would pray and pray, and I'm like, well, God's not going to do it, you know? Please give me the job. Please let me pass the test, even though I didn't study. Please, whatever, you know? Please bring me money. I need to pay my rent or whatever. But, it, and, but even though I said those prayers, there was a part of me that was like, eh, it's probably not going to work. You know what I mean? And so there was this duality all the time within me, you know? And so I guess um, just be, you know, belief in general can even either help you or hinder you. And so it's very important what we believe because that literally is the goggles we're looking through in this life. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, well, that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but it kind of <laughs> <but it kinda, laughs> does. It kind of does because the reason I ask you about the world is because the next line that Shanti Deva in his sermon he said just like the fire at the end of the age bodhicitta instantly consumes all great wrongdoing so he says according to buddhism at the end of the age there's this great fire and what he means by that is there are a, there is a belief or a buddhist prophecy that at some point way in the future there's going to be seven suns, and those seven suns are going to scorch the earth, and everything is going to be destroyed. So he's saying, just like that fire at the end of the age that scorches, the, you know, incinerates everything. Maybe it's kind of like uh, Avengers, where that guy snaps his fingers. You know, those people are like gone, no coming back. Spoilers. Uh, if you haven't seen the new one, right? Uh, you don't watch them. Well. 
just like everything was would be incinerated at the end of the world that's how our wrongs or our wrong thinking or anything that we messed up bodhicitta eliminates all of that you know it's kind of like I'm kind of a dork I say the wrong things you know sometimes I offend people on it unintentionally but like when I feel that love in my heart for somebody it totally covers that up that I'm an a-hole sometimes when I have that love that spontaneous love that comes in my heart that says hey dude uh, let me get your lunch today or you know I'm gonna pay for the coffee for the person behind me or no ma'am you go first that those little moments of bodhicitta covers up the fact that unintentionally sometimes I am an a-hole right mm -hmm. and so but what you have to understand <laughs> about Buddhism is talk about belief like it if you truly believe in the Buddhist doctrine, which there's a lot of them, and every Buddhist denomination believes something different, but if we are literally going through this life accumulating karma so that we can be born in a more auspicious life so we can get closer to enlightenment, you have to remember that this has been going on for an infinite amount of time. Like, infinitely you've been born. So many times an animal in various realms on various planets and it's like going back to school every time you learn something new right and so you don't have to get totally bogged down in this oh I screwed up blah 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 you know you just get up every day and do your best right and so when when Shanti Diva says just like the fire at the end of the age we don't know when that's going to be like this is like you talk about billions and billions of years this world has been here we don't know when the fire at the end of the age is going to happen, if it does happen, right? But he's saying that in the Buddhist belief, just like, and also in the Hindu belief, they believe something kind of different. They say the eye opens and the eye closes. So it's like the Big Bang, all this stuff, all these universes and galaxies and all this stuff. And then it's kind of like a rubber band. It gets to a certain, you know, it gets stretched as far as it's going to stretch. And then it comes back and implodes on itself. And happens again so in Buddhism these are called not that but in Buddhism those are Kalphas and in Hinduism that they're, they're uh, yugas right have you ever heard that Malcolm Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga. so I, from the Hindu perspective your wrongs are like those planets super imploding into themselves until there's just like nothing right that's how well Bodhicitta covers your your wrong thinking and your wrong <coughs> motives right Okay, so the next line says, Bodhicitta's unfathom unfathomable advantages were taught to the disciple Sudana by the wise Lord Maitreya. Now, this kind of like gets into a whole different book that we're actually going to study after this, but... Sudana is this, it's like a hero's journey. There's this monk that goes on this journey to 53 teachers. And he learns something from every one of these teachers. And Maitreya is the 51st teacher that he goes to. Uh, but what's interesting about this story is, this monk goes to women teachers. He goes to men teachers. He goes to Hindu teachers. He goes to ascetics. He goes to different religions. And it's not just Buddhist teachers. And it's not all males. And that's what makes this extremely different than um, other sutras and other religions, basically, because in Buddhism we respect women as uh, enlightened beings, as being holders of wisdom, you know. And so this guy Sudana goes through all these 53 teachers, and the, on the, the 51st teacher was Maitreya, and Maitreya taught him about bodhicitta. And that was like, he only saw two more teachers before he was enlightened, but that third to the last teacher taught him about bodhicitta, exactly what we're talking about now. Um, and and Maitreya is another thing where our Buddha is Shakyamuni, but there will be a future Buddha named Maitreya. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Any comment about that so far? Any questions?
sun what happened? Exploded? The meteor that was at the dinosaur center. Yes. And oh, the meteor. <laughs> the ash from the eruption or from the meteor striking coated the earth. Yeah. In like a like a like a coat of ash. Right. And over time it suffocated the whole earth and everything died. So when you dig uh, deep enough on the earth now, you can find that ash in that point in time. Yeah. Because it's been so long. Sorry. I don't know that was. No, that makes sense. There's supposed to be should there's supposed to have been like six, six extinction extinction extinctions like that on this planet, right? Civilizations get built up and the animal population and then something happens like that. You say a meteorite hit, ash flew up in the world, it probably set off volcanoes or whatever, who knows. The sun got blotted out. The sunshine couldn't get through because of all the ash. Have you ever heard of this? Mm -hmm. Yes? The volcano one, that was the worst. Okay, tell us about that. There's an event called Permian extinction. Okay. That happened well before the dinosaurs ever evolved to the prior Triassic periods of time or whatever. And what people think is that the cause of that was massive volcanic eruption throughout the Earth that resulted in the oceans becoming acidic from sulfuric acid from the volcanoes and stuff getting flooded out. And that was the worst extinction event that this is, that has been on the planet. About 90% of life was wiped out, and including even bacteria. Wow. <laughs> right. Resilient, right? That never happens for better than humans. Because yeah. there'd be some other kind of sentient creature walking around. Right. We got through all the holes in the Swiss cheese through all the extinction to be us. Yeah. To create the next extinction. Yeah, now we're in the world. Yeah. But, uh, one way or another, Tuesday, right? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I got plans next weekend, man. That can't happen. Don't the universe know who I think I am? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> So you know, there there was a time in my life, I think when I was young, I would have heard something like that and, and went the opposite direction from Bodhicitta and thought, well then I can do anything the hell I want, right? I can rob, I can steal, nothing matters, this world's gonna, you know, get sucked up into the sun, screw it. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> Absolutely, right? I'm gonna be, you know, according to Buddhism, have many more lifetimes leading up to that event, right? And the only thing that I'm going to take with me, my belief, is the bodhicitta, the goodness that I've done to others, the compassion I've shown, you know? That's the thing that's going to outlive my death. All right? All right, so then the next uh, verse says, In brief, the awakened mind, bodhicitta, should be understood to be of two types. The mind that... Is aspires to awaken and the mind that ventures to do so as is understood by the distinction between aspiring to go and actually going so the wise understand in turn the distinction between these two and I know it's kind of hard to understand this translation I tried to find better translations 
they're not out there, right? Um, in Buddhism, you get this sometimes. If something is translated too much, they take out all the Buddha, 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 Buddhist terms, and then they water it down too much. And then when they keep the Buddhist term, sometimes it's a little difficult for you to get through. It's kind of like heavy reading, right? But then the more you practice like anything else, it gets easier, right? So when I read it, I totally understand it, but to read it in, in this type of uh, context is a little tricky. But basically that's saying there's, there's bodhicitta, there's like two, two minds as far as uh, <laughs> They compare it to the mind that aspires to bodhicitta and the mind that actually uses bodhicitta. So they're saying like there's two frogs on a, have you ever heard that? Two frogs on a log. One of them thinks about jumping in. How many, how many frogs are still on the log? Huh? Why? Because he was just Because he was just thinking about jumping. He didn't actually <laughs> jump, right? So basically Shantideva is saying there's people that talk about bodhicitta but they don't actually use it. Right? So, so thinking like, about bodhicitta and actually using bodhicitta are two different things. So it's like actually um, saying and doing. Right. right. You can talk about going to the coast this week and all you want. But until you got sand on your feet right. and there's sea air blowing on you, you're not at the coast. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's like two dimensions of our own mind, right? Tell me about that. Let's talk about it. Well, it's because like in the, because it said that there are two aspects of Right? Yeah. And then one is asp aspirational and one is like action oriented. And so if I mean I can have I can have the potential to do both, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could have the potential to do both or neither or one of them. Yeah. So I could I could either not think about it, I could think about bodhicitta, or I could then think and then do. Or I could just even just do. Right. So that's all like the potential I think that like exists kind of within the within one mind, within our mind. Yeah. But it's just different Yeah. It's like they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? I was going to go help the poor nuns of the Guadalupe feed the poor, but I just never got around to it. I thought about it, I just never did it. You know what I mean? Um, and so that's all they're saying is, there, you can talk about it or you can do it, you know? Mm -hmm. In fact, when was it when I went and helped uh, Robert move? Was that last weekend? <laughs> was it, what, Sunday? Yeah, so Sunday I was just getting up, you know, I was just like waking up and my phone's going going off, right? And so I get up and I look and it was this guy, he goes, hey man, I really need some help moving today. I got to be out of this apartment and nobody else is responding to my texts and stuff. And I was like, boop, I didn't see that uh, <laughs> uh, on Sunday. <laughs> and I live in Floresville, so it's like drive back. I'm already driving here six days a week from Floresville, so this is number seven. Mm -hmm. I'm like, boop. Hope somebody else responds to that text because uh, I ain't going to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so then the phone's ringing. And I'm like, oh, God. You know, <laughs> it's, and it's ringing and ringing. Uh, uh. All right, I finally answer it, right? So this is my mind going, I always talk about this stuff. I always talk about this stuff. I always tell everybody about this stuff. Shit, I got to actually do it. Damn it, you know. And so I'm like, what's up, Robert? Hey, dude, I don't know if you got my 20 texts, but uh, I'm moving. And I'm like, all right, man, what time do you want to do it? What time do you want to be? You got a truck, blah, 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 you know. And, and so then I was actually talking to another, another one of my friends. I told him I was going to do it, and he said, I'll help you. And so we both showed up. We helped this guy, a friend of ours, move. Afterwards, we went and had some really great Chinese food. We had fun. I, we met his brother. His, his brother is like a, a character. And uh, it turned into a really great day. So I got to actually spend the day with two friends and meet this guy's brother, who's now a friend. And I drove home like, hey, that was a great Sunday. Helped this guy move. It really wasn't that much. It was like one U-Haul thing. Didn't break my back. It's been worse, you know. But there was that, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning and you're getting these texts from somebody. Wow. It's like, am I going to use bodhicitta or am I not going to use bodhicitta today, you know? Whoa, sorry. Yeah. And so that's all that he's saying here is, like, there's the aspiration to actually live out bodhicitta. There's the aspiration 
and then there's the activity, the actual doing of it. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. All right. Anybody have anything else? 